Şeytanir Razim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Atiyullah atiyur rasulu ulul amri minkum and always a reminder from myself and abdukulaji sudaifu miskinu zalimu jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence at any time Allah get tired and take us out of existence that this life we have is a rahmah and a mercy and that Allah grants immense blessings in this life, the immense realities of guidance, this love that Allah puts into our hearts for His Divinely Presence and calls us to the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and alhamdulillah only Allah teach from Sayyidina Muhammad's immense oceans of realities that these three characteristics that Allah grants and that these characteristics they're intertwined and locked with each other like three companions. The char- characteristic of modesty the characteristic of humility and the characteristic of faith. When go around asking, which characteristic do you want? If Allah could grant you, many say faith, some say modesty, some say humility. And only Allah inspire within our hearts there are three companions that are interlocked and define the character of an individual, a character whom is based on faith. Means what Prophet asked of us is that achieve faith and iman and only Allah come and teach us that if you want real faith, a faith that bonds and builds within your soul and for all of eternity is then to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself. So our whole way is based on building that faith. And the companions that come with iman is modesty and humility. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The one whom takes a path towards iman and faith, Prophet is guiding for them that if you truly think you have faith and you are truly directing yourself towards faith, he has two friends that never leave, Allah lock them all together for us to understand. Means the one whom is trying and struggling to achieve this iman and to achieve this way of love for Sayyidina Muhammad must obey the two companions attached with faith. Means that modesty comes to the door of the servant and says that if you're asking for faith to enter, we must come too. And then Prophet taught for us, take a path of modesty, be modest means conceal yourself, take the clothing of modesty, reveal 
to your home, your husband, your spouse only, not to the world. Don't show off, don't expose, don't do all the things that we see are being done today. And invite that guest of humility in your life, to take a path in which to look down not up. Means look to our feet, nazar bar qadam, don't look to what people have but to stare at our feet and our path, that where are my feet taking me in life, what is my path in life. Be happy and content with what Allah has sent to us. Love and appreciate what Allah has given to us before we have so many lists of want. So people now can remember all the different talks related to this. So many people are busy wanting something from Allah therefore having a difficulty in drawing close when they don't really understand what they already have been given from Allah The greatest gift is, I gave you Islam. And if you are shiqeen and muhibbeen that I gave you in these classes and courses and associations this love of my most beloved, Sayyidina Muhammad I gave you the tariqahs, I gave you all these realities and you don't thank me the way they should be thanked. You don't express that thankfulness because people are always busy praying for what they want, not what they got. Not begging Allah, Ya Rabbi keep my faith, let me to go deeper into your realities because everybody is always praying for something they want from Allah from dunya, from whatever but very few pray that Allah keep them in their faith, let their faith to go deeper, let them enter into the presence and the love and the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad and everything in dunya is about taking away modesty. The reason to understand the three of them are locked is because you see people whom are supposedly influencers and they start off religious and in a matter of time shaitan has convinced them to lose your modesty. And People whom lose their modesty continuously tell you they have faith, don't worry about it. So, no but these are three friends they stick together, they're not separating. This is a, a bond in which Allah has united them. When you kick out modesty faith and humility are going with Him. No matter how much you want to lie and how much you want to say in, in your dunya, doesn't matter, you're not going to convince anyone and definitely you're not going to convince Allah That these three companions, they have to be actively in our life. Means that modesty has to remain within our home. When it's in our life and in our environment, in our home, it's a sign that faith must reside there because modest people they by virtue of being modest in this dirty dunya you gain the entry of your friend humility because you're a more humble person, you're conservative in what you want to expose of yourself and your demeanor and your behavior. And as a result that servant must be either in these oceans or moving towards the oceans of iman. Because each are supporting that servant in the reality, that they grow an ishq and a love. Look the servant with iman, he has a love or she has a love for Prophet And as a result of that love the two friends are there. Modesty accompanies that servant and reminds them, be modest in this approach, don't, don't keep… it keeps catching you, don't expose too much. Don't show too much, don't, don't, just don't, 
don't, don't, don't and keeps pulling you back with a rope. As a result of that rope of modesty then humility is a dress that dresses upon the servant, less interested in, in, in exposing everything. And it's such an important reality on these nights of love and ishq because we, we talk a lot about these stations and these realities and some of the basics may be overlooked that these three friends are together. So when somebody feels themselves losing their modesty then it's a danger that it's not something you can just let go out the door and don't worry that humility and faith remain within you. They're also departing. When modesty leaves faith is saying, we're going to. So it's a sign for us a way to calibrate our lives. That is shaitan, you know exactly what shaitan watches, wants because you look at social media. There's nothing humble about posting everything about your life and everything you have in your life, doing a complete inventory of your life on social media for the whole world. Don't post your children, don't post your property, don't post anything other than knowledge which aggravates everybody and they don't… they want to shadow ban you. So it means you're doing something right. When the satanic system doesn't appreciate what you're posting, you did it right. But boy if they love what you post, something went wrong. Something was immodest about that, something was not right because that's how their system works. We post against smoking, they ban the video, they put it, nope we can't post this video, no. So it means it's, it's, it's an immense gift from Prophet to remind us that in our life and in this world that's ever pushing us towards all these realities that we keep a life of humility. That to be humble, not ostentatious, not showy and to keep a character and an adab and mannerisms of humility and that their life is to teach ourselves and our family and our children modesty. Don't underdress your children hoping one day they're going to grow up to be modest. They have to be disciplined and trained in modesty. If you let that dog off the leash you will never bring it back. Because we say ev every bache is a, is a gorg, every wolf cub is cute because cubs by their nature are cute. But remember that's a wolf. When that cub grows up it's no longer a cub, it's a wolf. And if it's disciplined you're lucky, if not that wolf will eat you. So modesty is trained from birth that you keep the children covered, you keep the way of modesty, teaching them humility, teaching all of what Prophet brought for us. After 18 then what can you do? That person is an adult in these cultures. But at least up to the age of 18 we tried our best in life to teach the way of modesty, teach the way of humility, teach the way of being thankful and soft. No matter what you have be kind to people, don't look down to people, be respectful of people means these are the, the adabs and these are the teachings that the tariqahs specialize in. They are the schools of mannerisms and, and the manners are very defined mannerisms to reach towards these realities. Means their schools of mannerisms are an immense ocean of realities that they can break down the realities of mannerisms that is so profound in our spiritual development. That when we teach adab it's not only the manners the students have to have for the shaykh, 
But it's the shaykh's manners for the students. It's not a one way, it's always two ways because every teacher is always a student. Means that at every point in our lives we are surrounded by people and how they should respect the position of of the teacher because that's the position of the Muhammadan kingdom. You respect the office that they represent. And that the shaykh has to have a mannerism to respect all the people. And because we were talking about something today and it's important because so many times we get posts from ulama and social media posts and, and shaykhs commenting on this and that, I don't know why they speak like this, I don't know why they say like this and these are not things we heard, this is not in sharia, this not this, this not this. And making all sorts of comments. But to remind myself and that they should be reminded that Allah holds to account everyone for manners towards His creation. Not one way that, oh adab is, you people respect me, this adab, yahoo. But no, the mannerism was how I was trained to respect you. You're Allah's creation, Allah loves you. As He loves us, loves me inshaAllah, He loves His creation. This reality only works if it's both ways. That's why the, the big sultans, they were so immensely amazing. We're coming now to the urs of Sultan and awliya, Mawlana Shaykh Muhammad Nazim al-Din Haqqani, Qatta Sallallahu Siru. Immense love. I never heard him call anyone a kafir. Because he understands his position with Prophet that if you think he's a kafir, you're responsible to teach him. Not to label him, not to attack him. If you don't think he knows sharia, you train him. We're not here to cast names at people, especially the bigger ones who think they're big awliya, then their job was what? was you were supposed to guide them because everyone is under Ummat al-Muhammad The Ummah that accepted and the Ummah who has not yet accepted. Everyone is under the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad Didn't he pray with all the Prophets on Isra before Miraj? Means that all the Prophets entered into Islam, took the shahada with Sayyidina Muhammad Acknowledging all their nations are under his flag. Now his nation that he's looking to is then go out and do dawah, that's the only purpose of your life. Not to eat and acquire massive amounts of cash. Allah is going to ask you that, did you go out and do dawah to the people? Spread the good word by your khuluq, your character. Your entire life is spent Take care of your family but do your dawah. Allah didn't send us here to amass fortunes because that's not going to be an answer you're going to give to Allah Every dollar you have in the account is going to be a rope around your neck. Then what is it doing there? Why didn't it go out for dawah? Why didn't you call people to this reality? Why didn't you bring people towards Islam? So the shaykhs make it very easy, take your finger, post and sh share the post. So means the, the turuqs then are supposed to be the examples of that. That, oh if I'm the bigger shaykh, my responsibility not to call you names but then start having teachings of what sharia is. If you think people lack the understanding of sharia, then teach them what sharia is. If you think they lack adab then teach adab. We think they lack the love and the respect of Sayyidina Muhammad We teach the ishq of Sayyidina Muhammad And it's interesting because the tariqahs, their, their basis, a strong foundation is Surat al-Kahf. That anyone wants to know mannerisms and the ways of, of following tariqahs, 
Allah gave to us, it's a starting point, is Surat Al-Kahf. And the example of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr And what Allah wants in tonight's understanding as a reminder from Holy Qur'an how it guides our lives is that in the time of Sayyidina Musa salam, to understand and the backdrop of this, he was talking astonishing things. And his people were saying, MashaAllah that, is there anyone more knowledgeable than you, Ya Kalimullah? Means people have to contemplate what we're saying. So when you think somebody's big and somebody's this and somebody's that, they're nothing in comparison to a Prophet of Allah So now a Prophet of Allah in which he speaks to Allah is being asked by his people, is there anyone higher than you, Ya Musa Salam? Says, I don't think so. But let me ask, Ya Rabbi, is there anyone more knowledgeable than me? <laughs> How are you going to ask that? Of course, above every knower there's a knower. Because the concept is you can never limit Allah It's against our belief system, Ahlul Sunnah belief that if you think Allah give you from an ocean of rahmah, say, go take from this ocean of rahmah and you took one cup. Do you think the ocean was diminished by your, your taking it? It's impossible, it's against our belief system because Allah is infinite. What Allah provides is infinite, has no limit. We can never limit Allah So there is nobody who encompasses the limit of Allah's knowledges because the reality of Prophet holds infinite knowledges as Allah is infinitely expanding creation. So how could somebody have a finite understanding that he's it? Should have known not to ask that. But as a result of asking and thinking, am I the highest one? Allah said, no. As a matter of fact, I'm going to send you to only one of my servants. So here's now a Nabi, because many people think they're the final authority on earth. But this one is a Prophet of Allah who speaks to Allah one of the six great Prophets of Allah And Allah is telling him, no. I have another servant on this earth, one. One more servant, many servants, but I'm going to send you to one who lived at the same time as the Prophet of Allah and had a different kind of knowledge that was astonishing for Sayyidina Musa And he told the Prophet of Allah how you can follow me when your knowledge is incomplete, you won't be patient. Why? Because this is a under, deep understanding of humility. Don't ever think that you know everything. And one should never think in a school of adab that who has permission to talk and who doesn't have permission to talk. There's 124,000 awliyaullah upon this earth. And they receive from Allah and from the heart of Sayyidina Muhammad whom Prophet commands to speak, they speak. No anyone else. Whom Prophet commands, you don't speak, they don't speak, no one else. The knowledge that they have are all uniquely gifted by Allah no two the same. Because Allah is not in need of manufacturing the same product. Allah's infinite oceans have infinite uloom, infinite specialties. And that was just from the understanding of Sayyidina Musa and Sayyidina Khidr A huge Prophet and a huge awliya on the earth at the exact same time. And the knowledge that the wali had was baffling for the Messenger of Allah And that the wali clarified, because you know some things, we're going to have a hard time because it just is not what I know from these knowledges and as a result you're going to question everything. And tariqahs come to teach the same thing, be careful. 
who you comment about, who you're talking about, who should talk, who should not talk, what they should say, what they shouldn't say. The adab training is you know what you know and you know what you don't know. And when you don't know and you hear somebody else speaking haqqaiq, stay quiet. If you didn't understand it, alhamdulillah. If you didn't like it, alhamdulillah. But there's no one person who sits with the authority of Allah and knows who should be speaking and who should not be speaking. And who knows all knowledges and all realities means that's the sign that this is not tariqah manners. The tariqah manners is that what you know, you know. What you don't know, you don't have to make any comment on it. What you appreciate, you can speak about it. If you don't appreciate it, stay silent about it because this was tariqah was to teach adab as a manner say, alhamdulillah, this is a servant of Allah it's not, it's not for me. Because Allah is reminding, there is a Prophet and a saint and the Prophet who speaks to Allah was baffled by the knowledge of that saint. And the saint warned him that, you're not going to have patience with what I'm teaching. And that's the immensity of Allah's Divinely oceans and Divinely realities. Means that we cannot limit our Lord and nor can we control our Lord. We can't control whom He gives what He wants to give to and what whom He doesn't want to give something to. Our life was just to have manners. So in our life when we would come across people whom spoke things that we didn't understand, we stayed quiet. And that which our heart understood and was able to absorb, say, alhamdulillah and we enjoyed it. It's like a buffet. The adab of eating is you take what's in front of you from what you like, what you don't like, you don't have to mention anything, you don't have to say anything. For the fear you should have a taqwa that you may actually be coming against Allah Because if this uloom and these knowledges were from Allah then now you're coming against. So even in the adab of eating, don't say anything against Allah's ni'mat, right? Because Allah is the one offended. Oh, you didn't like the chicken? Why you didn't like the chicken? The people who are starving here because they don't have chicken. I mean, so even in the adab of food, don't, don't say anything. You eat what you like and what you don't like, you don't have to make any comment about. If you imagine for food there's a manner, what about knowledges? So then some knowledges are just not in the interest of people. But doesn't mean we have one source and everything is coming from that source and that source now tells everybody who they say, what they don't say, what this is, what is that. No, 124,000 and each wali that receives and each whom are, are, are under the sainthood of different guides, all their knowledges are unique to them. And Allah gives them a uniqueness in which they feel they received everything. And there is no one higher and each time awliyaullah corrected them and said, no you're on that side of the ocean, you, you don't see any of us because we're on this side of that reality, we already passed that. Means that infinite oceans of reality. So inshaAllah reminder from myself that in this amazing way of realities Allah is amazing. We say, SubhanAllah. What Allah want to give to people is Allah So Allahu Akbar, nobody can limit what Allah Only can limit is, the, is a mind of a person. But we're supposed to be approaching with our heart. And when we approach with our heart and good manners and mannerisms and we teach adab not only for people how they should respect us but how we should respect them and how we should respect each other. So that the, the brotherhood, the tariqahhood grows, the reality grows, the love and the bond grows. Otherwise the casting of names and, and calling people kuffar and calling people this, calling people that only develops uh, extreme hatred and bad character. For who? The, the weaker minded people whom their brain is da'if, is weak. Because they, they take these understandings and these insults and they try, try to act aggressively against people. And many people were harmed in history by that. 
somebody of a, of a weaker understanding hears something, oh this like this, this one bad, this one bad, then they, they go out and try to hurt people. The tariqahs come to teach good character and love, that this is the way of Allah Allah gives infinitely to him his servants and alhamdulillah. And if you like from that garden sit and enjoy it and if you don't like from that garden go find another one. We pray that Allah on this, uh, these holy nights grant us from these realities and these adabs, these oceans of adab are what open for us proximity to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Good manners open everything, ishq and muhabbat open everything. It draws us close to the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen bi hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi seerah Surat al Fatiha. When you meet real servants of Allah <coughs> means very perfected and high level servants, they may say nothing. Right? We went to the maqam of Mawlana Sharaf al-Din and we're going through all the maqam and it's a very old little man was following us. Hmm? Who sent that old man there? And he didn't come and correct any talks or whatever we're saying and say, oh what do you say, it has to like this, like this. Just sat back there as an observer. Why? Because you're visiting huge awliya. And that observer just sit back there and make a for everybody that their ziyarat be accepted and push into their heart goodness and take away from their heart badness. The life of awliya was to serve, was not to cast titles and names and fights and battles but was to serve. If you're very high you'll see the character of the high ones, they're very quiet. They do their, their job without looking. When at the end of our ziyarat with Mawlana Sharafuddin we went after him to get du'a and he's already gone because he knows in the heart they're going to turn around, they're noticing me because he's the only one out of our <laughs> jama'ah. We know who we are and there's just one old man staring at us with turban everything just staring at us. So it means that you see them in your lives, the role that they show up, they don't need to say much, they don't need to correct you on everything you're doing is wrong. Their job is to pray for you and it's their prayers that Allah is looking for. So alhamdulillah, inshaAllah Allah keep us around these good people, these loving people and that the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad that Allah send this awliyaullah to, to watch over us, to pray over us. Whatever they think is wrong, they inspire within our heart towards correctness and goodness, ishq and muhabbat. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa. Wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh.